Hey guys, David here and welcome to Datalab Tech. So about a year ago I started the journey of building my own custom CNC machine. And now it's time to evaluate if it was worth it and if you should build your own CNC machine or buy a finished one. So a year ago I started with researching CNC machines and with the planning of how to build my own. The goal was to build it at around $400, nice and cheap, but it ended up costing around 800 bucks, which is about twice as much. And how it got there and why it's got so much more expensive I'm gonna tell you now. And while we're talking about cost. One very important cost we need to consider is time. I spent the better part of a half year trying to get this machine working and building everything from the ground up. Now, of course, I'm no engineer and I had very little machine building experience. So I had to learn everything from scratch and that of course took some time. And here we are at the biggest pro of building your own. You learn a lot. I learned tremendous amount of things from designing to machining to everything else that goes into building your own machine that you design yourself. If you just assemble a kit from Inventables for the X-Carve, you do get to know the mechanics of it a bit but you learn a lot more and a lot deeper things if you build it yourself and you really have to understand how it works so that you can construct the different parts. But let's take a look at the end product, what I got after working so much on it. So the machine is working. It does cut wood and acrylics pretty easily and I can get some quite nice parts. But it isn't without its flaws. So I'm just gonna list a few of the main issues that I have with the machine and things that I would change if I would build it again. The first one is the spindle. It is a okay spindle for around 100 bucks including the power supply and everything where you can adjust the speed and it's really nice. It isn't the strongest one and the obvious answer to add a stronger motor for about the same price would be to just use a router. But if you have ever used a router for wood then you know these things are really loud which wasn't very desirable for my use case as I have the CNC machine in the same room as I am. And if I'm doing a bit of a longer cut then I don't wanna have to wear ear protection all the time. But as I'm gonna touch on later, there has been some other problems with sound as well. Now the second key issue is the size. Now I saw the Inventables X-Carve, it's the bigger one is a square meter as the base platform. And so I thought, okay, that's one, this one is so big, so I can build a big one as well and can machine entire side panels. At the time, I didn't know much about mechanics and the CNC machine, but you really know quite fast that if you have a piece that is so long, it flexes a lot more in the middle than if you have a piece that's only so long, provided these, they are made by the same material. That's one key issue of such a big machine. I also have never used the entire space that is available to me. The biggest thing I cut on my machine was maybe like 30 by 30 centimeters, but I could cut easily 70 by 70. But it takes so long. If I'm just cutting out a simple shape out of 90 millimeter MDF, it takes me around half an hour to an hour to cut out a piece that is about that big. And at the state that my machine is right now, this is really long time. That's because the spindle and the mechanics just aren't strong enough that I can take very deep cuts. The maximum I can go is about two to two and a half millimeters deep in one single pass. 
that's okay if your material is only 5 mm thick, but with 19 mm MDF, which is the material I use the most, these are quite a few passes. And I also can't go too fast, so it really takes a long time. And because I'm not an engineer and didn't know much about CNC or machines in general, when I began this project, there of course are a few design flaws. While I copied the main functional elements from the X-Carve, I did make some adjustments. Some of them were good, like using stronger material for the plates that I machined, or making the wasteboard a bit stronger, and things like that. But on the more complex parts, where different things get connected and everything, I didn't have as much experience and didn't know how I should do this properly. And so there is a bit of play, and also the spindle is quite a lot distance between the spindle and the rail for the x-axis, which then allows the extreme forces that are at the bit in the front where you're milling, there are very strong forces, and because this distance is so high, they translate into quite big forces that act on my rails and my mechanisms, which aren't too strong to begin with. This then means that when I'm cutting something like aluminum or trying to cut it, the machine flexes a lot and it isn't really enjoyable to watch. It also introduces a lot of vibrations. If I'm trying to cut aluminum, I can stand in the other end of the room and I feel everything vibrating. And that's although I have the machine on a very sturdy table and everything. These vibrations can also get quite loud, where I'm at the point again, while my spindle is really quiet, the vibrations make everything loud again. But focusing on the good things is, the main materials I wanted to machine are acrylics and wood. And those two, they may take a bit longer than I would like, but I can machine them. It would be nice to machine aluminum as well, but with this machine it's not really too desirable. Maybe with some more tuning and some adjustments I can get it to work, but it won't be a very pleasant experience with this spindle and mechanics. Also, something to really quickly just mention is that this spindle design introduces quite a lot of interference with the USB interface. So I had some problems with my USB interface and when I used just a normal USB cable, I had random crashes and stuff like that. So the solution I found was to use a short shielded cable and also wrapping the cable through a ferret core improved the stability greatly. And with a rather short distance between my controller and the computer and, and shielded cable through a ferret core, I didn't have any problems anymore. But now it's conclusion time. Would I build it myself again? And should you build it yourself? Or buy a finished one like the X-Carve? Now from a point of view of a 15 year old boy, which I was when I began this project, who doesn't know anything about CNC milling and I didn't really need a CNC. I didn't have like a certain project or anything where I needed the CNC for. I think it was really good to build it myself. I learned a lot about everything and I can use this knowledge when I build, maybe build a bigger one, which is even stronger. But if you require an end product, like a CNC which works and you don't have too much time on your hand, it is a much better option to just buy a kit and assemble it. You still learn about the mechanics and everything, but it takes a lot less time. And in the end, it will is guaranteed to work. So. If you liked this video, please leave a like down below and also consider to subscribe. I also have Twitter and Instagram handles linked down below and I have a brand new website that you can check out as well. Thanks for watching and until next time.